All right, what is going on today, guys? Welcome to today's video where I'm gonna go over the five simple steps to starting and growing your very own marketing agency in 2022. So make sure you like this video below, subscribe if you're new, you guys enjoyed the last video, so I'm gonna be bringing you two to maybe three videos a week, depending on how much output we can do, but just like, comment, and subscribe below, and let's get into today's video. So there's a bunch of people who obviously, you know, pitch starting an agency. They have programs, they have, you know, coaching programs where they teach you how to build a marketing agency. And I really want to condense things down very simply for you because when you first start, number one, you might not have a crazy amount of capital to maybe partner with a white label agency to help you with services. Because that's what most people or the route that they take is they get a logo, they get a website, you know, they get some type of simple email funnels that they can get leads but they're missing the whole point of an agency and how you should be thinking about it is how you can exit, you know, with maybe seven figures, eight figures selling that company. And that's what I want to do eventually between 30 and 35 years old is I want to build this asset enough to the point where it's sellable and then I can sell it for seven or eight figures moving forward. So the first thing first is when you first start, no one cares about your logo. No one cares about your name. They care about two things. They care about you and they care about the results. So that's why I sell my agency as a personal brand. I don't sell it as Wojo Media. People don't really know that it's Wojo Media. They care that it's Jason Wojo. That's why they buy from us. They're excited to work with me because I have that personality on my profile. They want to get to know me more. They've seen results. They've seen me posting so many times a day. I want to get into that being one of the key parts. So number one is getting a personal brand and not selling it as a logo or an actual business right now, okay? So sell it as Jason Wojo, whatever your name is, obviously nice to meet you, but you have to sell it as you and start posting content around what you're doing with your agency. If you're more lead gen based, you wanna push more e-com to be in your ecosystem, or maybe you're working with a lot of personal brands, whatever the case may be that you're pushing, you need to obviously push it as a personal brand first. The second piece is, building out systems and automations that are actually going to make you more streamlined, make you look more professional, and there's simple ways that you can do so. Number one is like obviously get an email with your domain on the end. These are the simple things I'm gonna be going over. Number two is make sure that you get very familiar with Slack, Calendly, um, you know, ClickUp, Zoom, um, and Zapier. Those are probably the biggest apps that I would recommend you obviously hone in on and understand because I don't care how small you think you are. If you don't know how to automate from the very beginning, you're going to get to a point where you plateau. You might make 10K a month or 20K a month, but you're gonna be so busy with fulfillment that you really can't like scale because you don't have any systems or automations in place. So really look into that for you know streamlining your onboarding process and et cetera. So that's number two. Number three is the biggest objection that I get with SMMA, which is do I pick a niche to start off? And the answer is no, okay? If you don't have proven results in a niche, odds are you should not be going just niche. You can't just start an agency and be like, hey, I wanna work with just solar companies. I wanna work with just roofing companies. I wanna work with just you know local business. You need to have proven results in a niche for you to actually scale out. And you can push offers for different niches. Like for myself, we target every single niche. And that makes us way more money because we have good fulfillment. A lot of agencies can't do that and spend the money that I spend on ads because they don't know how to bridge the gap for all niches because every niche, their biggest question on the phone is, hey, have you worked with companies in X, Y, and Z? And you know, if it's lead gen, it might be booked phone calls, it's coaches, consultants, service providers, it's local business, it's e-com, like you always have to have a couple of case studies for each. So when you first start, try to grab as many clients as possible, get as many case studies as possible because a business that's roofing or a business that is, you know, maybe window washing or like a barber shop, whatever. You could say like, hey, like we don't work with your exact niche, but we've done this and this and this and this with these other niches that are of the same price point as yours. And you can use that messaging to relate to them. Okay. Don't just get honed in on like, oh, I just want to work with gyms. Well, we all saw what happened to gyms back, you know, two years ago when COVID first hit. You do not want to just put yourself in one niche and it's dependent on outside, you know circumstances. That's why we do e-com, we do local local business, we do service-based business, we do coaches and consultants, service providers, basically every single niche from A to Z. The only niches that we don't work in are CBD, 
and like crypto and investing based offers, okay? Because those are very like, you know, the, the, the policy sound of a little bit tougher. That brings me to the next point, which is you need to actually know how to hire because if you're gonna be the person who's the bottleneck in your sales and the bottleneck in your fulfillment, then once you hit about 10K a month, you need to be looking to hire people to replace the tasks that you're doing throughout the day that are not, you know, productive for you. So if you're servicing, you know, let's say three to five clients making 10K a month, you need to be able to, you know, fulfill your sales. You need to be able to fulfill admin work, answering emails, billing, support, chat support, account management, um, task management, project management. You need to be able to look for people who can do those things for you. And that's where I give you onlinejobs.ph, which is a huge app that I use to find people when you're first starting out. Like you can't afford somebody in the US, you're making 10K a month, you can't afford an account manager for four grand, three grand, even maybe two grand a month. It's hard on your margins because you're trying to be as profitable as possible, get more money in your pockets that maybe you can find other outlets. You know, you can run pay traffic, whatever the case be, which I'll get to very shortly, but you need to be able to have those positions that you can easily fill. Maybe you need another media buyer. Maybe you need, you know, a, a virtual assistant who's just gonna help you with daily things. Like, you need to be able to delegate all the things that, you know, obviously they're not making you money. It's the whole 80-20 rule. 20% of the things that you do as a business owner need to, need to make up for 80% of the revenue. And like, the place that I'm at at my business right now is that I don't really do much, but I focus more on our numbers, our sales team, because sales drive numbers to the business, our LTV, our customer retention, numbers that are actually going to allow us to scale with predictability, SOPs, you know, being able to hire people with predictability without having being, you know, such a bottleneck in training and making sure that we're having quality assurance with the new hires. Okay, so I'm looking for more so people who are hot, like that I'm hiring that are obviously of qualification they have a good quality control, they've done this same niche before, they understand the parameters and the SOPs that would come with an agency like myself. Obviously at scale, you need to find people you know, who are gonna be more expensive too because odds are they have more experience. Um, but in the beginning, it's okay to be kind of a bottleneck in the training process because you might train them for a week and then they can go on their own and do what they gotta do. Number four, okay, this is the biggest thing probably that I kind of fell into was setting expectations along with uh, contracts, okay? You're gonna be onboarding a lot of clients. You wanna grow your business to the point where, you know, obviously you're making a lot of money. So you need to understand that when you're making a lot of money, you're gonna have a lot of, you know, probably more problems. And that's actually really true. Um, you need to have contracts and expectations in place for your clients to know that X, Y, and Z is gonna happen in these first seven days. X, Y, and Z is gonna happen in the next 14, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And we use HoneyBook for that, okay? We have simple contracts that are sent out, okay? They're three month commitments, six month commitments, whatever the client is customized for, with deliverables, refund policy, what to expect, your guarantee, uh, softwares they'll need, expectations you need from the client because it's an accountability partner. Um, and then also, you know, framing them before they buy. So if they book a call with you before the sales call, they should be watching some sort of video that goes over like, hey, this is what you need for your call. This is what you expect with working with us. You know, uh, we are X, Y, and Z. If we do X, Y, and Z, we do not do this and this and this and this. So that that client has the expectations going into the sales call of what you do so that there's no loose ends. There's no like, hey, they buy today. And then they're like, wait, I thought you did this. No, we went over those deliverables and what obviously is entailed in the service so that you're not leaving these people on a thread, which will then lead to refunds, chargebacks, and et cetera, okay? Because when you're scaling, you know, if you're not getting 100 transactions a month and you get two people who are pissed, that's a 2% dispute rate. That can get you shut down on your payment processor, okay? And that leads me to number five, which is a combination of a lot of things. But number five is what holds all the glue together. And number one is knowing your numbers, okay? If you do not know your numbers in your business, and you're not able to predictably scale, then you really don't have anything. Number two is having a higher retention rate. Okay, you need to focus on giving these clients, you know, so much communication and so much effort. That's why account managers are probably the first thing that you should be hiring because communication is everything. If you have 24 seven support within your Slack chat where you have your clients, you're gonna have a huge retention rate. Even if you're not driving a crazy amount of results, they still like that communication and it's gonna really lessen them from doing a chargeback or wanting a refund because you're putting so much time and effort in it. At least it seems like it, okay? Uh, you get someone in the US and you get someone in the Philippines and you have them rotate the clock on that 24 seven, you know, Slack support. And 
obviously you paying you know overseas can be a lot cheaper third thing um is definitely being able to like retain your profits and put it into other areas so when you first start maybe you don't have enough money to spend on paid ads but you want to obviously get like virtual assistants who do cold outreach this is huge because it can book you you know maybe five to ten sales calls a week which is you know pretty big for an agency owner just starting out so looking into vas who do cold outreach through linkedin email scrapping you know, Instagram DM, cold outreach in general for the niches that you're looking for that you know you can drive results for. And then that leads me into the paid ads. If you are an agency owner and you get to the point where you have at least, you know, 25K, 50K in the bank saved, you can then run paid ads, okay? A lot of people have a money block about running ads, getting clients, having predictability in their business. If you actually wanna hit the six figure a month mark, you have to be able to book X amount of appointments a day. That's why I talk about knowing your numbers. If you make 20 grand a month and you book two appointments a day, then what do you think the difference is in you making 100 grand a month, which is booking 10 appointments a day. It's just simple math, 5X. You make 20 grand a month times five is 100K. You make two appointments a day, that's 60 appointments a month. You should then be able to book 300 appointments a month. If you can book 300 appointments a month, then you should be able to make 100K a month. But what does that allow you to do? Hire people, have more systems in place for you to obviously scale and not be bottlenecked in all the processes that involves an agency. Um, and overall, like, do I recommend building an agency? Of course, like it's a very good business model, has very good margins. You know, I would say between either 45% to about 65% margins, um, which is huge. But obviously when you are scaling, you're gonna have more costs. Um, you know, softwares are gonna be very expensive. You're gonna be paying a lot for a CRM. You're gonna be paying a lot for, you know, Zapier to have all these apps and automations, your productivity softwares, your task management. Um, you're probably gonna have, you know, if you're making six figures a month, you're gonna have, at least 20 employees, which is about gonna be two to three grand per person. So you're looking at, you know, probably 60 grand a month in payroll. So, and obviously taxes. You're, if you're making six figures a month, you're in the 45 to 55% tax bracket. So you're gonna be, you know, basically all that you make, you just chop it in half, you gotta give it back to the government. So just keep that in mind when scaling your business. Um, even after taxes and all that, if you're sitting around 40 to 60% margins, you're chilling. That's a very good place to be in. Um, and obviously, you know, having good retention. You know, I would shoot for over 80% retention. If you can do that, then you are in the top 1% of all agency owners because most agency owners, they churn and burn, they put people in three month contracts, then they get out and they go somewhere else. They might charge back or dispute if you don't have contracts in place. Um, and it's an overall just churn and burn business that will shut you down on payment processors, okay? So that's the biggest thing for starting agency in 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed these tips. Um, if you do have other questions, just comment down below in the comment box below this video. Like, share, and follow, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.